This is Tim Gallagher of the Sioux City Journal. I'm with Don Hickey, professor of history, Wayne State College, and celebrated author. We're at the Betty Strong Encounter Center, where Don just wrapped up a Sunday afternoon program on Paul Revere and some of the myths surrounding his famous ride. Uh, when did it take place, and uh, did it actually start the Revolutionary War as we know it? Uh, Paul Revere's ride took place on the night of April 18th, April 19th, uh, just before, well, several hours before the battles of Lexington and Concord, which marked the actual be beginning of the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. uh, Revere's role in this was to help spread the word into the interior that a British campaign to seize military hardware at Concord was underway. Did he, okay, what I remember <laughs> is that he rode from village to village shouting the British are coming, the British are coming. But that's, that doesn't square with what really happened? No, he never would have said the British were coming because they were all British. Um, that would be tantamount to me warning you that the Americans are coming. Uh, he would have said the British soldier, or rather the soldiers, the troops, or the ministerial army, meaning the army controlled by the British ministry in London, but he would have not have said the British are coming. Would he have said redcoats? He might have said the redcoats are coming, or if he wanted to be nasty, he might have said the lobsterbacks are coming. Okay. That was a pejorative uh, description of British soldiers. He was one of about how many riders getting the word out? Uh, well, probably as many as 100. Every time a community learned that this British expedition to Concord was underway, um, uh, it sent out riders to other uh, uh, communities uh, further in the interior. And I would say there were probably as many as 100 riders out that night spreading the word. And he was captured. He was captured, taken back to Lexington, and then released when the British realized word was out this uh, campaign was no longer a secret. In ret d does that puzzle you that he, that they would let him go? You, you referred to him as kind of a big fish for them, or a good get. He was a big fish, but the war had not begun. He would not have been a prisoner of war, and they were simply keeping him for a while because they didn't want him to spread the word. But once they realized that the word was out and everybody knew that that uh, expedition was headed out to Concord. There was no point in keeping him further. If he was one of 100, and he was one who was captured, and he didn't make the full ride. Correct. correct. He did not make it to Concord. Why, why is he the one that we all know? Ah, he was immortalized by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow in the poem Paul Revere's Ride, which was written in the early 1860s to stimulate northern support for the war, and that poem was read by probably a hundred years of <laughs> elementary school teachers, I'm sorry, elementary school students, and that's what fixed Paul Revere's ride in our public memory. And it was, this was then the flashpoint, or the start of the hot war. The flashpoint came when the first shot was fired at Lexington about 5.30 a.m., on April 19th, and uh, Revere claimed to have witnessed that. He thought the British fired the first shot, although we're not sure today whether uh, that was actually the first shot or whether the Americans fired the first shot. We just don't know who fired the first shot, but that turned the Cold War between Great Britain and her colonies into a hot war, a shooting war. Thank you for sharing today. You shared your story today with uh, over 100 people in a free program at the Betty Strong Encounter Center. You've been here before, and you're going to be back. Yes. Next program? I have a trilogy of presentations on World War I, which I'll present next spring. Thank you very much. Don Hickey, Wayne State College professor of history and author. How many books? Uh, Eleven books. 11. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, my short history of the War of 1812. My best-known book is a longer one called The War of 1812, A Forgotten Conflict. Thank you very much. Thank you.